I would like to say to Tudor that you can switch on your camera while I would suggest to Josué to switch off his camera. Thanks. Okay, okay. Let me check. Do you see me now? Yes. No. It looks like uh, my camera is on. Okay, if it doesn't work, you can start the same. It was just... Okay, now we I, we can see you. No. Ah. Do you see me? I, or... I, I can see you. I don't know the others. But... Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh... So thanks for the, for the introduction, Oscar. Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending this presentation. My name is uh, Tudor Vartolome, and I am an early stage researcher in the Stardust Star project at uh, the University of Rome, Tor Vergata. On the presentation today, I will talk uh, about the computational methods and the application of uh, proper elements. The results uh, that are going to present here are obtained in the work collaboration with Professor Alexander Ceret and Giuseppe Pucaco. Okay, here is the summary of this talk. I will start with an introduction of uh, proper elements concept and the historical overview. I will describe the methods developed and uh, <clears throat> used for the computation of proper elements for asteroids with some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, after that, we will see which are the most important benefits uh, of these elements. Um, on the second section, we will describe the theoretical aspects of the computation of one of these methods and how it is implemented in the case of uh, motion of space debris around the Earth. The third, the third section contains the preliminary results of this method and the analysis of the output of uh, uh, this computation in different situations. In the end, uh, some conclusion and directions for the future work are given. Uh, as a definition, we can say that the proper elements are quasi integrals of motion for a dynamical system, but alternatively, one can define them as integrals of motion for a sim simplified uh, dynamical systems. Um, intuitively, the proper elements are parameters that are nearly constant in time, uh, and they are obtained by kind of average over short and long period, uh, periodic perturbations of the motion. The most common proper elements uh, are the proper semi-major axis, proper uh, inclination, and proper eccentricity, but one can define other set of parameters as uh, proper elements. Mm, the history of proper elements has begun in 1918 when uh, Hirayama published a paper about the possibility of identification of asterisk groups within, uh, with the common origin. Uh, at that time, he didn't mention explicitly the name of proper elements, but uh, the linear theory of uh, secular perturbation uh, used by him described exactly the concept. After that, in 1951, Dark Brower analyzed the results of Hirayama, and uh, with an improvement uh, theory of motion, he got a better accuracy of, uh, of the computation. The next contribution is due to the James uh, Williams in uh, his PhD thesis in uh, 1969, where he developed the semi-analytic theory. Mm. With uh, this new method, he was able to, to compute the proper elements for asteroids with high inclined, um, uh, with uh, high inc inclinations and high eccentricities. As well, in 19, uh, 1979, Kozai, using uh, his uh, uh, theory of secular perturbation, defined um, mm, Define a new set of uh, parameters to identify the families of asteroids. The first one who touched the problem of computation of uh, proper elements uh, for a resonant group is uh, Joachim Schubert in 1987. He was trying to analyze the Hilda family. In the 90s, Anne Lemaitre and Alessandro Morbidelli worked on the, uh, on the improving of uh, the semi-analytic theory uh, based on the methods of Williams and uh, Jacques Henrard such that they uh, uh, was getting better results for high inclined orbits. Mm. In the same period of time, Zoran Knezevich and Andrea Milani extended the analytic theory described previ previously by USA, and they implemented an iterative method um, for computation of proper elements using this theory. After 2000, uh, the same Milani and Knezevich developed a new method, the synthetic uh, theory of computation of proper elements, um, a method which is done completely numerical. 
Okay. Uh, during the presentation of uh, the history, I mentioned three theories, namely the analytic, the semi-analytic, and the synthetic. And I'm going to to briefly here. Uh, all all three methods, uh, even they use different mathematical tools, uh, are described by similar steps. All of them begin with the modeling of uh, the Hamiltonian system uh, in terms of oscillating elements, which are the same major axis, the eccentricity, the inclination, the mean anomaly, argument of periapsis, and the longitude ascending of the nodes. As well, at, the, at this first step, uh, a preliminary analysis of combination of angle is needed for each of these methods. The second step has the same aim for, uh, for each method, namely the reduction of, uh, of the short angles. But um, the procedure of doing that is uh, different for each one. Uh, this step is done using analytic uh, uh, analytic theory for uh, the analytic average for analytic theory, um, the numerical average for semi-analytic theory, and online filtering for the synthetic theory. The third step consists in separation of motion in integrable and uh, uh, perturbed part for the first two theories and then el elimination of force term for uh, the synthetic theory. Then an averaging over uh, slow angles is used for the analytic and semi-analytic uh, theory by using canonical transformation, while, um, while in, the, in the case of uh, synthetic theory, uh, a Fourier analysis and the extension of, of principal harmonics are made. Mm. In the in the last steps, the obtained results are used for definition of uh, of proper elements. Uh, uh, each of these methods has its own advantages and disadvantages, and the choosing of the method depends uh, on, on the on the context of the problem. Um, for example, if it's wanted to analyze uh, the dynamical structure of a resonant region, the analytic method is recommended. But for high inclined orbits, the semi-analytic uh, theory is better choice. Um, in the end, if one needs a very high accuracy for the computation, the most powerful method for this task is, uh, is the synthetic theory. Um, as some benefits of the computation of proper elements, we can enumerate the identification of spatial objects in families, the analysis of um, different phenomena like uh, chaos or resonances, the determination of the origin or the age of a space object, and last but um, not the least, the discovering of physical properties of a target, target objects. Mm, this last point uh, could be very, very important in case um, of the determination of catastrophic event that generated the, that objects. Okay, the image on the bottom of the page is a representative one when we talk uh, about the um, application of um, proper elements. As you can see on the left plot, we have the portrait phase of eccentricity versus inclination in oscillating elements, in which uh, uh, is described, uh, which is described by a cloud of uh, of points. Instead, uh, on the right uh, on the right plot, where the proper eccentricity and proper inclination are shown, we can distinguish uh, some groups um, or clusters that are formed. <clears throat> uh, on the second part. Uh, uh, of the presentation, I will uh, describe how the analytic method presented uh, before has used uh, for the computation of proper elements. Mm, but uh, in the case of space debris uh, uh, around the, uh, in the earth space environment. Mm, before that, I have to define the dynamical system mm, and to describe the Hamiltonian model. In this case, we have used three, three forces that uh, that act uh, on the dynamics, namely the Earth with its non-sphericity, and the, <clears throat> the Moon and the Sun. The general form of uh, this perturbative function are shown on the slides, and uh, all of them are expressed in the Keplerian elements of the satellites, Moon and Sun, uh, and also the sidereal time. Mm, uh, since they, uh, they are infinite series expansion, we need to do a truncation and to, to keep the, the most important terms. Therefore, we make some assumptions for each perturbation. The, the, the only terms kept in, in, in the expansion of, um, of the Earth are the Keplerian part and the largest harmonics due to the obletas, namely the J2 term. 
as well and averaging over the fast angles, uh, the sidereal time and the mean anomaly of the satellites is done. For the Moon and the Sun, the expansion is truncated also um, uh, at the second order and uh, average over mean motions of the satellite and the planet. More, some of the parameters uh, are assumed to be constant in the expansion. For example, uh, for the Moon, the, the mean distance from the Earth to the Moon, uh, we, we take the mean distance from the Earth to the Moon as a semi-major axis, an eccentricity around 0 0.05, an inclination of uh, 5.15 degrees, and um, we assume as well the angles, um, the other angles evolve linear in time. Mm, for the Sun, we have uh, the same major axis equals to one astronomical uh, unit, uh, and <clears throat> an eccentricity of uh, 0 0.06 and an inclination around 23 degrees. <clears throat> the argument of periapsis and the uh, longitude of the nodes uh, are, uh, are assumed to be constant. Um, in this way, we finally obtained the much uh, simplified Hamiltonian with uh, a fair enough accuracy, which depends only on eccentricity, um, um, inclination, argument of periapsis and the longitude uh, of the nodes, but also on the time through the linear parameters uh, of the moon. We pass this Hamilton, we pass then to, to the linear variables, which are written here. Uh, because uh, we need the we need the Hamiltonian in these variables for for the method that we apply. So the procedure that we use to to compute the proper elements is called normalization, and the results will be will be the normal form of uh, of the Hamiltonian. This method consists in an iterative reduction of uh, secular perturbation by by using canonical transformations. Mm, the canonical transformations uh, are made with a generating function and the uh, and the least series. Mm, before start before starting the <clears throat> to describe these steps so of the methods, we have to do prepare the Hamiltonian function. So firstly, it has to be an uh, it has to be independent on time. So uh, we used uh, another variable qm instead of the value of longitude of the moon. And we added its uh, conjugated action Q, uh, capital QM. <clears throat> Next, we have to split it in two parts that are convenient for um, for the normalization, so that uh, we shift the motion in an arbitrary but fixed region and expand it around it. In this way, function Z contains only um, action which are uh, linear, and uh, function L contains the rest of the terms. Here, uh, lambda mm, uh, is the, we called it um, uh, the bookkeeping parameters because uh, with, uh, with it, we just label the, mm, the terms that are, that are perturbing the Hamiltonian. Mm. In the next steps, we, we denote uh, the action by I and the angles uh, by, uh, by phi because uh, we, we want to, to describe the steps as general as possible. So the reminder, the reminder can be split again into, into parts, uh, part free of angles and um, uh, a part that contains angles. Uh, the, the target of each step is to remove the part that contains angles. Uh, so we, we take it and um, write it uh, as a sum of, um, of product between actions and cosine functions. But uh, further, it uh, can be written as a Fourier series. Uh, and um, in this form, we can uh, we can choose a, a proper function to to, to remove it. Uh, mm, this proper function is uh, is called um, the generating function and has the following form, and uh, it is obtained by solving the homological equation here. Mm. <clears throat> the mm, the new Hamiltonian. Uh, in the new coordinates is uh, uh, is obtained by applying um, the least serious opera opera operator to to the old Hamiltonian, where the least serious operator is uh, is written on on the bottom of the of the slide. <clears throat> now we we have to to compute the proper elements. Uh, if we go back before starting the normalization, we we see that the first proper element, uh, namely the proper semi-major axis is already known uh, since the, the Hamiltonian function 
uh, is independent of, on the mean anomaly M. For the other two proper elements, uh, the proper eccentricity and the proper inclination, we have to use the generating function um, obtained after the end of the normalization procedure by uh, by computing the inverse of the Lie operator applied to the initial co uh, condition coordinates. Uh, shifting back, we get the new Delaunay variables that are used for the computation of uh, the proper eccentricity and uh, proper inclination. But I want to summarize the mathematical part and trying to make uh, all these things clear. I create the scheme of the method. So the steps for the computation of proper elements are the following. So we create the, uh, the model and define the Hamiltonian function. Truncate the perturbation, uh, fun perturbations function and average over fast angles uh, such that we obtain a less large Hamiltonian. In this, uh, at these steps, we already have the first proper element, namely the proper semi-major axis. For the other two elements, uh, we have to, to continue with the following step. So we, we transform the, the Hamiltonian such that uh, to be independent uh, <coughs> on time and expand it uh, in a function uh, in a fixed region. Uh, uh, we split again the um, we split the, now the the Hamiltonian in the integrable part with um, with the linear terms in the action and the perturbable part labeled by, by bookkeeping parameter. After that, we 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 split again the perturbable part in a part free of angles and the part that contains angles. We define uh, a function uh, such that by using Poisson brackets, the part that contains angles can be removed. And um, applying the Lie series uh, to the old Hamiltonian, uh, we, are, uh, we will obtain the, the new Hamiltonian. We can repeat uh, these steps, um, the, the, these last four steps, for, for a better accuracy. After we, we end up with, uh, with this uh, loop, we can use, uh, we will use the, the generating functions obtained to compute the proper eccentricity and, uh, and the proper inclination. So, uh, Let's see now how these methods work in um, uh, in some situations. Now, for instance, we started with two different orbits that uh, starts from the near initial um, uh, value around uh, 20,600 kilometers in the major axis, an eccentricity of 0 0.01 and an inclination of uh, 15 degrees. The three plots shown the, show the following. Uh, the first from the left contains the evolution of the same major axis and um, in the proper semi-major axis, but as I said on the previous slide, there is no rate of change in semi-major axis, so it is a constant and the proper element is equal to the uh, to the initial um, uh, semi-major axis. So let's uh, let's focus on the last uh, two plots and uh, that are the eccentricity and the inclination respectively. At the first beginning, I define the proper elements as a kind of average uh, of the motion. Uh, and as you can see, for example, in the case of eccentricity, for each of, uh, of uh, the orbits, the proper eccentricity is, uh, is located on the middle of the strip determined by, by the evolution. For the inclination, it's working as well, but uh, it's a little bit harder to see it do due to the overlapping of, uh, of the evolutions. The, a second experiment is made at a farther distance from the Earth, around uh, 36,000 kilometers, um, and uh, an inclination of 45 degrees. As you can see, the evolution of inclination is uh, quite strange, having um, two frequencies. But uh, for the yellow one, the proper elements associated has still a good, uh, good accuracy. For the inclination, the results, um, the results are, are, per are perfect fine as well as in the previous case. Okay, and now uh, in the following experience, uh, experiments, we use the breakup simulator to generate plenty of space debris in a certain region. And um, we analyze the, um, then the difference in the phase space of, uh, um, of computation of, uh, of the evolution uh, and the computation of the proper elements of them. Therefore, we have uh, here a collision. Oh, sorry, we have here a collision um, 
between a small body and the satellite at a distance of uh, 2,600 kilometers. The rules are the following. Uh, the first one is the distribution uh, after the breakup. The second one is the evolution of the fragments over 1,000 years. And the third one is the computation of, uh, of proper elements. On each row, we have uh, three plots that are uh, from the left to the right, the the same major axis versus eccentricity, the same major axis versus inclination, and the eccentricity, uh, the inclination versus eccentricity. In this case, the region is uh, quite stable, so we cannot see a big difference in the three row. Uh, maybe only um, there, there is a region around uh, the inclination 40.8 uh, 40 degrees, uh, where the phase space of proper elements is more dense uh, than one in the in the revolution of uh, oscillating elements. Okay, but uh, let's go uh, with the second breakup. In this case, an explosion at the altitude of uh, 36,700 uh, kilometers, where we observe uh, something really interesting. First remark uh, is unexpected sinusoidal distribution of the phase space of semi-major axis versus inclination uh, after uh, after 1,000 years. The second remark is the uh, near reconstruction of uh, of the V-shape distribution using the proper elements in the first plot. Uh, even uh, they are very spread after after 1,000 years. Um, as well, <coughs> uh, on uh, on the second plot of, uh, uh, of the last row, we, uh, we can see that the fragments are, are grouping around the inclination of 46.4 um, of degrees, which is a value around, around the middle of the, the interval of, of the evolution, 40, 42 and uh, uh, 52. Okay, and uh, here is uh, the last experiment, uh, a collision generated um, uh, very far from the Earth, at uh, 71,400 uh, 71, kilometers. Uh, the evolution is really unstable here, with uh, large growth in eccentricity and uh, and in inclination. Here is much more visible how the proper elements helps uh, in the reconstruction of uh, of the phase space on all of uh, all of uh, these three cases. Uh, as well, uh, if you look of uh, uh, if you look at the intervals um, of the evolution and the intervals where uh, proper elements are located, we will remark that um, mm, they are kind of average uh, of, uh, of the motion. Okay, and uh, as uh, some conclusions, we have seen that the proper elements are useful for uh, the identification of space uh, uh, space objects uh, in specific region and determination of uh, the common origin. Uh, there, are, there are three methods that have been developed and they, are, they become stronger and stronger and we can use all of them to compare the results for for a better uh, better accuracy. As well, we can say that the preliminary results within the space debris problem are encouraging. Mm. And for the future work, we will mention that the computation of proper elements for mean motion and uh, mm, secular resonant motion uh, we, it's, it's ongoing. Also, we'll, uh, we'll try to implement uh, the other uh, two methods and to start the classification of space debris and families um, in order maybe to, to find the origin of them. Here um, is the reference that we use in, in, in this work and uh, with this, I, I will finish my presentation and thank you for your attention. If I will, I will happy answer to, to any question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tudor, for the 